going to do that again? Very good. Thank you. Blessed us. How's everybody? Pretty good? It's a good deal. You like the cool weather? It's not, it's not about 92 or 3 out there. It's pretty nice, isn't it? Compared, compared, compared to what we've had, right? I want to, uh, we're, we're going to, somebody asked, well, what, what are we looking at tonight? And we're we're kind of, it's a related subject. By the way, Austin, thank you for the music that we've had tonight. I think every song that you sang tonight uh, referred some way or another to what I'm going to share tonight. So, did he leave? Oh, oh, you're up there. Hey, you, you're doing this. Boy, you can just do everything, aren't you? You just amaze me. You know what? <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to talk about making a difference. You know, making a difference. Influence. Uh, being a, a positive influence. Something that, you know, probably all of us think about and want to do. and We, we want to do the right things. And we want to be used by God. And we want to uh, influence others to be to love the Lord and to come into right relationship with the Lord and, and uh, just doing the right things, you know. And, and we see that God intends for us to do that. When we read the Word, there's a reason why we feel that way. And that's because God is leading us to feel that way. When, when we look at the Scripture like, like we looked at this morning, you know, out of, out of Romans chapter 12, well, well we, we see it's very evident that after verses 1 and 2 that there's a, a description of the church and how we as individuals fit into that church and how God has given us certain gifts and puts us in certain places so that we can be used by Him to, uh, uh, to glorify Him. And, and it's, I use the football team because I like sports and I can relate to that. And you may not, it may not make any sense to you, but, but still yet it's a team sport. You know, I didn't ever play any sports except team sports uh, until after I was in high school. That's all I knew was team sports. And team sports, you all work together for the good of the whole. See? And so, you know, a football team is a good example. You've got 11 guys that's working together for a win. Or maybe it's 22 guys, but there's 11 on a field at a time, you know, or 30 guys. It's, it's a team effort, you know. And, of course, the coach tries to include the bench warmers or those that don't get to play very much, you know, say, well, you've got an important role, too. But, but it, is, it, is, it is an effort for the good of all. And, and, and that's really what a church is, you know. Uh, we get into trouble when we start, you know, when we start individualizing different ministries, you know. That's so-so's ministry. That's so-and-so's gift, you know. And we start separating then. And, and we start putting walls between one another because of that. Tuffy, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. I love that shirt. That's orange, isn't it? I mean, it, uh, purple. Oh, okay. Well, I knew it wasn't feeling well, and there it is. <laughs> but, but anyway, it, it, is, uh, it is, that's what God has called us to do. And, uh, and we see that God leads us in that direction so that we can be team players. Now, individual sports are different, you know. When I, I, get, I get out of high school, well, I, when I went to college, well, I found there's different sports that, that you, you depend on yourself completely, you know. And, and it's a good sport. It's good for us to do that because we find out what we're made out of. When you, when you go on a mission trip to different places, you know, you, you find out what you're made out of individually because you, you're taking part with maybe a team, but still yet... It's kind of an individual activity between you and God of sharing the gospel or doing some things for the Lord that might benefit others, you see. So we, we can see that it's very evident that God has a plan for us, and he wants us to find his plan. And he's trying to reveal that to us. You know, I, I've had, you know, I have people oftentimes say, well, I just don't know what God's will is for me. Well, let me just reassure you that God is trying to reveal to you His will for you over and over again. He's a lot more aggressive with His revelation than we are desiring to receive it. Because a lot of times we're afraid of it, you know. But we see this, that, that if we're doing what God wants us to do, then we find that He is glorified, others are blessed, the gospel is spread, the church is united, 
the church grows, things happen the way we expect them to happen as we follow the Lord and do what He wants us to do. Well, when we, I, I didn't get down to this, uh, and that's why I'm going back to it, uh, in Romans chapter 12, verse 9, it says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. It says, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, with given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on, on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. That's a picture of what God has called us to be. And we should be able to see ourselves within this. You know, we, we this morning looked at if it's to prophesy, prophesy in the proportion that God has given you to prophesy. If you're, a, if you're a preacher, then preach what God has given you. You know, God gives us sermons. I, I tell young preachers, you, He'll give you more sermons than you can preach if you'll just listen to Him. Uh, I, I've often asked by young guys, well, where do you get your sermons? Well, I don't get them. They're given. They, they come from God. As you spend time with God, God speaks to you as, as a pastor. And, you know, He speaks to you what you can handle. I, there's a lot of things that are in the Word that I don't understand. And, and, and God reveals sometimes more than I've had. But, but still yet, I take it at face value that I share in proportion to what God has given me. If He gives it, then I share it. If he doesn't give it, I try to be quiet about it. Let someone else do that, you know. But it, it, but it continues on. He says, not just, you know, not just preaching, but it says ministry. It says, if, if he's called you to ministry, you know, what, what do we think about that? You know, ministry is, is us doing some things that God has assigned us to do, that he's gifted us to do. We might call it missions. Uh, you know, missions is, uh, I won't ever forget this, and I, I'm probably a shown you this before but once I was in uh, out in Glorietta and this guy was teaching about missions and he said he said okay everybody do this you know everybody stand up and do this and he was going like this you know he said now this is missions and don't forget it so I haven't ever forgot it but missions is recognizing a need like this one over here and finding the resource to meet the need and getting the two together that's missions it's simple as that and that's what God has called us out a lot of times he reveals needs to you and I. He'll, he'll show us something that he wants us to do or get involved with. It's missions. We find the resource. It may be us. It may be something that we can do or it might be someone, someone else that we know of, but we get them involved. We encourage them to go. If teaching, I was a teacher. God, I think God intended for me to be a teacher. I w I've been a Sunday school teacher. I've been a teacher in the church for a number of years. You know, I, I, I know something about teaching. I enjoy teaching. I feel like that God has gifted me in teaching. Uh, I, I just understand that that's how he puts people together. But, but it's important for us to remember this, that no matter what God has called us to, if, if we recognize he's called us to the ministry or the missions or whatever, We've got to remember that we've got to adjust ourselves to Him. He does not adjust Himself to us. He's shown us. He, he convicts us. He reveals to us. But there will always be some adjustments that we'll have to make in our lives to be involved in what He wants us to be. All right. Sometimes we should sit around expecting God to just lay it in our lap. Well, you know, if He's called you to... To share your, your testimony with your block, you're going to have to get out of your house to go down the street and share the gospel. 
You've got to put some energy to it. You know, you, we have to adjust ourselves. Now, tonight we're going to be looking at another passage of Scripture about how this all happens again, and it's what Jesus shared with us in, in the Sermon on the Mount. Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. And we'll see how Jesus describes, actually describes us, you know. He said, he said you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. What sense did Jesus use to describe how we are? Taste, right? Can you tell whether something is salty or not? I've lost most all of my smell some time ago, so I can't smell anything. Of course, I don't think salt smells, does it? But anyway, sometimes we lose our senses. But salt, being salty, we see that Jesus used this so everybody that was listening to him could understand exactly what he was saying. He said if salt loses its flavor or its saltiness. It's basically good for nothing. You can gravel the road with it. It'd be, it'd be good for that, I guess. But, but we see this, that he is illustrating what we are supposed to be. We are the salt of the earth, making a difference in others' lives. If we continue, he says, he uses another example. You are the light of the world. Now, we understand that. First of all, it's something that we can taste. Secondly, it's something that we can see. We can see light. Light takes away darkness, doesn't it? If all the lights were out and if it was dark outside and we were in this building, it would probably be what we would call pitch dark, right? That's the way the world is, is pitch dark. But God has called us to be a light to the world. And when a light comes in, no matter how small, it would, if it came into this room, it would light up this whole room. We would be able to see as a result of that light. I remember when I was five years old, uh, Daddy and Mom took us. That's the last vacation I had with Daddy and Mama. Uh, they took us to California, and we went to Carlsbad Cavern. And my daddy carried me through Carlsbad Cavern when I was five years old. And I remember, you guys, if you've been there, you remember when they turned off all the lights, right? We don't ever forget that. I'll never forget how dark it was, even as a five-year-old child. You know, you could, you could hit yourself in the face and not even know your hand was coming, right? But when they turned on one little light, then everything glowed. We see that... That's the illustration that God has given us. He says, you're the light of the world. He said, a city is set on a hill up cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a, on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before man that they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father in heaven. Not pump you up and say, aren't you talented? Aren't you good? You're so gifted. No. It is that we reflect the Lord to them. And that they may think, you know what? I know it's right for me to love the Lord with all my heart, with all my mind, and with all my soul. Making a difference. Being a positive influence. I remember as, as a young man starting to teach school as a VOAG teacher. I remember being very convicted of how important it was that I saw the importance of being a positive influence. I was lucky to have a positive influence ag teacher and a lot of teachers at Wayne High School that were Christian teachers that were of positive influence. When I look back at what was going on spiritually around me, it usually was around teachers because God had placed them in the right place at the right time to make a difference in a lot of kids' lives. You can probably do the same thing. So we see that God wants us to influence others. Now the truth is, you know, the more stable and the constant our walk is, the greater and more lasting is our influence. The more, uh, the more stable and constant it is. That w it's important for us to be a good witness all the time. Because you see, others are watching all the time. I remember the first time I heard a deacon in a, in a church use a foul word. And I was just a young man. 
I was a young boy. And, and I was devastated because I had an idea of this guy. I'd seen him day in and day out. But this one little moment, this little moment that he used language that he shouldn't have, I was right there. I was looking. And it hurt that witness that he had all of those years in my life. So it's important for us to realize how important it is for us to be consistent, constant, that we might be aware of the fact that we're always there to make a difference in others' lives as God uses us. We all influence the lives of others one way or the other. It's either for good or it's for evil, right? And we want it for, to be for good because we know that's what God wants us to be, that we might be a good witness for others. In fact, our behavior not only negatively or positive affects those that we work with and live with and play with, but our behavior affects generations to come. Here we come, more, another generation. You know, I've got great grandsons. I have two great grandsons. My behavior will affect their lives. My behavior will affect their lives when they become men and have children of their own. I'll be dead and gone a long time ago, but... I promise you that at some point their great-great-grandfather will be brought up and I will affect their lives. Their memories of me, what they see Sherry Lynn and I doing. Uh, I had a grandson that called us soon after our 51st wedding anniversary and said, Oh, Papa and Mama, thank you for the witness that you've been to us just staying together for 51 years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but but we see that God uses things like that when we might not even think about it. That it's important for us to allow Him to use us. We well, you know we don't have to be famous to be influential. Uh, we, fathers and mothers influence children probably more than anyone else. Uh, in turn, and it's instilled the, the same values uh, that we have as parents will be carried on with our children. I see my kids now, you know, doing things just like we did. Uh, not very many, but once in a while, the doing things, the way, parenting the way, way we parented, you know, reacting to life in that way. Well, we all want to be a godly influence. We all want to touch lives. But we see that the greatest way is uh, to live life in a special way. What is that way? Well, Jesus said pretty clear, and I, I think it's illustrated here, but it's Christ-controlled life. It, it is... It is a life that, it's a life that is devoted to the Lord. It's a life that's obedient to the Lord, doing what the Lord says. God speaks to us. Has, do you know how God speaks to you? Have, have you heard from Him lately? You see, God speaks to us in a way that we know it's God and we know what He wants us to do, right? And so we see that that affects other people's lives. It's a person that's always seeking God's will, no matter what happens around you, you, you the first, your first thought in circumstances is, where's God's will for me here? I want to be in God's will. If I am in His perfect will, then I know that I'll be a positive influence to others and that others will see Christ within me. We know that studying His Word is very important. Steve asked me a question a while ago, a, a deep question, you know, and I, I'm not a deep person. I'll just tell you that. I... I, uh, I told him this, and I'll tell you it too. I, I, was, going, I was going to uh, Mexico on a on mission trip, and I was driving, and it, and it took us two 18-hour days to get to our destination. And I'd been driving a long time, and this gentleman that was with us was right behind me, and we were just, just talking and conversing. But he was asking me questions, you know, and I'd had about 14 hours of questions. And I was tired, and I, I said, James, I said, I know that you are a deep diver. I can tell, and I, and I was really trying to describe it. You're a deep diver. You're way down there. You, you've, got on the, you've got on the helmet for pressure. You've got oxygen coming down to you. I said, you're way down there. I'm not deep, James. I'm what you would call a snorkeler. I'm right up there at the top. 
I've got that little thing going up. You've seen, you know, I'm about six inches below the water, top of the water, and I'm snorkeling, and I'm getting along good. I said, <clears throat> but I want you to know something. I'm just as wet as you are. Think about it. Well, that's the way all of us are different, you know? But if we're just as wet or what I mean saved, and love the Lord with all of our heart. It doesn't matter. Sometimes he calls us to be deep divers. But sometimes he even calls snorkelers to important positions of sharing the gospel and being a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah, it's just the way it is. And that's what makes it so good that God uses whatever we have for his glory and for his purpose. You see, as we study God's Word, just like we've studied today, then we see, we see the picture of the way He wants us to live. And as we submit to the reign of the Holy Spirit as God leads us, and we just surrender to the Holy Spirit every day, then, then we see that that's intended, and we become the influences that God wants us to be. You know, we, we influence through selflessness. Influence begins with giving ourself. We've, we first have to allow the Lord to be Lord of our lives, of for sure. But to influence others, we must have a relationship with others. You can't influence others unless you, you allow a relationship to happen, that you, that you converse with them, that you go see others, that, that you involve yourself with others in this life. And so we see that for us to be an influence, we must be selfless. I, I'll just tell you right now, right now I have a tendency to just want to pull up at my house and shut out all the rest of the world. I'm pretty comfortable. You know, I've got a nice chair and i got a wife that brings me tea and whatever, you know, and I've got it made in the shade, just to tell you that's true. But there's sometimes it, it doesn't seem to be worth the work to follow through with relationships. They're costly. You hurt with people. And, and sometimes it becomes a real burden. But guys, if we're going to be influences, we must be willing to be selfless and know that God wants to use us and that we do not have the right to have the excuse of saying, I believe I'll just get out of the ball game. I don't believe I want to be a part of this game anymore. You see, the salt must come out of the shaker before it can season through compassion the heart of influences is a compassionate heart do you have compassion for others you see God gives us compassion for others we're sensitive to their needs we're sensitive when somebody's hurting or somebody's had a bad day or somebody needs a little encouragement you see uh, 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 people don't care what you know until they see how much you care right it, it, it's true you know, a lot, a lot of times we want to show off what we know. You know, we, we want to show off our knowledge and so show off our experience some way or another with, with the knowledge that we have. But, but more important than that is it's important. Knowledge is important because it, it leads us to wisdom. See, God, God through His Holy Spirit uses that knowledge to give us wisdom. But all of that is there so that we can be a servant to Him and influence others in a positive way. And so we've got to be people of compassion. If you don't have a compassion, pray for a compassion. That you'll have a humble heart. And that your heart will go out to the needs that are around you. And then you'll find that God will lead you to those. Jesus didn't, didn't just spend time with his disciples. He loved them unconditionally. Can you see him gathering them around for the Lord's Supper? And loving them enough to in include them, even one that wasn't of them. You know, we see, we see that he had compassion. We need to have con conviction. You know, uh, the strongly held convictions are, are those that lead us to do what God wants us to do. You know, if, as we look at Paul's life, you know, Paul had a, had a compassion. He, he, had a, he had a conviction that we're to be gospel shares. Why? Because, because he knew that 
There were many, many, many that didn't know Christ as Savior. And he had a conviction that that's how they come to know Christ as Savior is because we share the witness with them. And God has called us out. That's, God, that's the way God called us. To, that's why he organized that is so that we might be gospel carriers. And so it comes as a conviction that, that we go and share with others the gospel message of Jesus Christ. You see, it's because of that experience that Paul said in Romans 1.16, the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. We touched on this just a little bit a while ago, but it takes consistency, faithfulness in the daily rounds of life. The key to life is to a lasting influence is consistency. Being the same thing every day being on top of it, being willing to start our day in love with the Lord and continue our day until we lay our head down on the pillow, loving the Lord and seeking His will in all. People tend to look at our lives as a whole, just like I looked at that deacon as a little boy. My goodness, what did he just say? You see, people tend to look at our lives not just when we're here at church, you know, not just when we're in a good mood not just when things are going the way we expect them to go but you see people look at us as a whole and it's important for us to allow the whole to be influenced by God so that whole can be influenced by the Lord for the Lord amen there's some scripture I want to share with you and, and, and you might want to write these down and go to them because they get they give encouragement but, but the first one is Philippians 2 Philippians 2, verse 14 through 16. It says this. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that you may become blameless and, harm, and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as the lights of the world holding fast the word of life so that, I, so that I might rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Another one, 1 Peter 2, 11. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. And we'll read 12 as well. It says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust." which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify, glorify God in the day of visitation. Can we see how important it is to make adjustments to be what God wants us to be? One more scripture, Proverbs 13. Verse 5 and 6. It says in verse 5, A righteous man hates lying, but a wicked man is lawsome and comes to shame. Righteousness keeps him whose way is blameless, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Isn't God good? God tells us exactly what He's doing in our life. You know, we don't have to go to the doctor and ask Him, I, I've got these symptoms. Could you tell me what's wrong with me? We don't have to go and try to find out that God is working on us. Right? No. Because He reveals to us His very presence. He allows us to learn to listen to Him and to know His voice. And He fixes our eyes and our ears and our senses so that we can see what He's doing around us and see evidence of our Heavenly Father and glorify Him every single day. Amen. Do you want to be of influence for the Lord? It takes adjustments. I want to tell you one more little story. In the early 80s, our little girl was 10 years old. And in the early 80s, she went off to children's camp up by Binger, Oklahoma. And they had parents' night on 
Thursday night usually or Wednesday night on one night. They have parent nights, parents' night. And this was before I surrendered to preach. It was in the early 80s. I didn't actually surrender to preach until about 86. Anyway, I was in this outdoor pavilion with about 200 screaming fourth through sixth graders. And I was so heavily burdened. I wanted to be of influence. I, I wanted to make a difference like we talked about this morning. And I prayed in that service, oh God, I would love to be influencing children like I see that's happening here at this camp. God is so good. Within the next year, I'd surrendered to preach. Within the next year, I was pastoring. Within the next year, I was preaching at that children's camp. And preached at it, I don't even know how many times I preached. I couldn't give you a number. But I got to see little kids come to know Christ as Savior. And for some reason, I could talk to little kids. I wasn't so old back then. They were willing to listen to me. And I could share with them. And, and they would listen. And I had a, a sense of activity to their needs that... It, was, it just seemed like it flowed. And I just enjoyed that so much. And I would think, oh, God, you're so good. I asked for opportunity. And I'm willing to adjust myself in any way that I must to be used by you. And God answered, seemed like, just like that. Amen. God is good. We want to finish our time together tonight in prayer as we usually do. And so if you have a prayer request that you'd like to mention, please bring that to our attention and then